Hey there YouTube. So in this video I want to cover US source FEDAP income and the potential withholding taxes that apply here when they're being paid to non-US investors or owners, right? So I've got some very simple examples here covering what I think are kind of the top three US sources of FEDAP income. Obviously there are many more. I'll kind of touch on that later. But this is just high level information on what you need to be cognizant of if you have a US company, non-US owners, um, what kind of taxes might apply. So uh, just some of the basics in the background here. What is FEDAP income? FEDAP is an acronym for a fixed determinable annual or periodical income, right? So this is income that's not connected with a trader business and it includes primarily passive income. So not connected with a trader business is key here, right? So if you have trader business income, so you're selling products or services, you have gross revenues, receipts, you have expenses. Um, you have a trader business that generates a net profit, right? And so generally a non-resident um, isn't gonna be subject to any income taxes in the US on trader business income, unless that's a US trader business and it has US source income effectively connected with that trader business. That's a whole nother discussion beyond the scope of this video. What we're focusing on here is just FEDAP income. So um, FEDAP, FEDAP income, again, it, it's basically passive income. So the primary types you see, dividends, interest, royalties, uh, certain types of rents. Uh, rents can actually file an election to be treated as not FEDAP income. It could be an ECI. Again, beyond the scope of this video, but it, it is included in this bucket, at least initially. Um, premiums for insurance, annuities, lottery winnings, and uh, there's a whole other laundry list, but these are the big ones. And I've highlighted these three because these are the three that you most commonly see. Dividends, interest, and royalties that are going to have um, these kind of withholding tax issues. So U.S. source FEDAP income paid to non-residents, whether it's a non-resident individual, so a natural person, or it's a foreign entity. That could be a foreign corp, foreign partnership, foreign trust. If these types of U.S. source FEDAP income are paid to these persons, it's going to be subject to withholding taxes at a base rate of 30% on the gross amount. And the relevant code sections here are 1441 and 1442. So 1441 covers this broadly for individuals and then 1442 covers uh, payments uh, to foreign corporations. Now the 30% withholding rate is the base rate, but it can be reduced um, if the recipient, so that non-resident individual or non-resident company, qualifies for a reduced rate under a treaty. Um, so if you're a resident of, let's say, the UK and you're earning US source FEDAP income, instead of the 30% rate, you might be able to get a lower rate if you qualify um, uh, as a resident and you meet one of the articles there for a reduced rate. Okay, so how do we source FEDAP income? Again, it's got to be U.S. source. So the U.S. sourcing rules um, are outlined in code sections 861 and 862. 861 addresses income that is U.S. source. 862 addresses income that is non-U.S. source or foreign source income. So again, we've got the sections here for the top three that we're covering in this video, dividends, interest, and royalties. Dividends, you'll find this outline in 861, A2, A through B. Uh, and, and basically, it, it means if you have dividends paid from a domestic corporation, it's U.S. source. So if you have a Delaware corporation paying out um, dividends, it's U.S. source income. If you have a Delaware LLC that filed an election to be taxed as a C-Corp, same principles apply, right? You've got U.S. source dividend income. Um, uh, dividends, so not listed in here, but um, just one little you know, minor caveat there is you can have U.S. source dividends from a foreign corporation. So if a foreign corporation is engaged in U.S. trader business and has U.S. source ECI, uh, a part of its dividend distribution could be considered U.S. source. That's one exception, very, very unique. You don't see it often. So just general rule here is if you have dividends from a U.S. corporation, it's going to be U.S. source dividend income. Interest is the next big one, 861A1, interest paid uh, by non-corporate residents of the U.S. Um, or a domestic corporation or, or entity, it's going to be U.S. source interest income. So if a domestic corporation um, 
uh, borrows money from somebody outside the U.S. and then the domestic corp is paying interest out to that person, that's U.S. source interest because it's being paid by a domestic corporation. Um, if you have a U.S. bank account and you have interest being credited to that U.S. bank account, that's going to be U.S. source interest. Um, um, and interest, again, U.S. sources, the 30% withholding rate generally applies. Um, not discussing it in this video in depth, but interest very often common uh, or qualifies for what's called a portfolio interest exemption where you can have U.S. source interest income paid to non-residents, but it's not subject to withholding tax, but it's still U.S. source in income. Uh, again, completely separate video on that because it's beyond the scope of this one. And then lastly here, uh, just to round everything up with our big three, we have royalties, right? So 861A4, Royalties are U.S. sourced. Um, if the patent, copyright, trademark, or other type of property is being used within the U.S., right? So if a payment is being made for use of property outside the U.S., it's going to be formed. So just to kind of clarify this, because this is kind of confusing um, to some people, is, you know, if we have a Bermuda Limited Company here, so this is a foreign company, Bermuda Limited Company, owns the IP to a book that's being sold in the U.S., you have a customer in New York that buys the book and the publishing company pays a royalty to the Bermuda Limited Company. The royalty payment is going to be U.S. source because the purchase and use of the book occurred in the U.S. It doesn't matter that the IP is owned by a foreign company. If it's, if it's being used in the U.S., the payment is going to be U.S. source income. So that's a U.S. source royalty. Okay, so now just to go into a little more depth on one, one of these examples, we'll look at a U.S. source dividends example. So we have Sam here, he's a citizen and resident of the Cayman Islands. And Sam decides he's gonna open a Delaware Corp. He's gonna own 100% of the stock. And um, under the default rules, a Delaware Corp is gonna be treated as a C Corp for federal tax purposes. So it's filing a Form 1120 every year and it's paying federal income taxes on its net taxable income. So after the first year, the Corp has taxable profits of 100K and uh, the, the tax rate at this time was 21%, so he pays 21,000, and the after-tax profit in the corporation is gonna be 79,000, so that's what's left over. Then the corporation decides it's gonna pay a dividend to Sam, he's the 100% owner, totaling 30K. So now what are the tax issues for the company and for Sam? Well, the $30,000 dividend distribution is US source, right, because it's being paid from a domestic corporation. Sam's a non-resident for federal tax purposes. He's, he's a citizen and resident of Cayman, uh, but more specifically, he's a non-resident because he's not a U.S. citizen, he doesn't have a U.S. green card, and he's not a tax resident under the substantial presence test. So the substantial presence test, in short, just means if you're living um, in the U.S. enough days during the year, regardless of what kind of visa you might have, uh, you could trip over this substantial presence test and you become a U.S. tax resident. Okay, so again, Sam doesn't, that doesn't apply to him. He's a non-resident. So Sam is subject to the non-resident non withholding taxes under 1441. So before the corporation pays that dividend, if it declares 30 grand, it's got to withhold 30% of the gross amount, so 9,000 in taxes. And then the 9,000 in taxes are going to be paid to the IRS. And then Sam is going to receive the difference of 21. So that's how the IRS gets their cut here, right? They, there's an outbound U.S. source dividend. The taxes is, have got to be withheld at source, so the corporation takes care of that. Sam receives the difference of 21K. Now, in order to report this, obviously, it's going to be reported on the tax return, uh, but the corporation also has to file Form 1042 and Form 1042S. Um, and these forms are used to report the gross amount of dividend paid to a non-resident and the amount of withholding taxes that are taken out and sent to the IRS. This is how the IRS reconciles um, the amount of taxes that are being withheld and paid to them because if, if you just sent the IRS a check, they wouldn't know what to do with it. So the corporation's got to file these forms. Now, also very important here is, is under this arrangement uh, in isolation, Sam doesn't have to file a 1040NR. So 1040NRs are filed by non-resident taxpayers that have either U.S. source income effectively connected with a trader business. So that's that thing up here, right? Income connected with a trader business. Or they have U.S. source income uh, that's FDAP income that wasn't properly withheld upon. So, for example, if the corporation paid this dividend 
and they didn't withhold a tax, then technically Sam is obligated to file a 1040NR and pay the tax that should have been withheld. But if you are a non-resident and you have all the taxes appropriately withheld at source, then you don't have to file this 1040NR. So Sam's done. He's just got to do his 1120 for the corporation. Corporation's got to do their 1042s. Um, and, and everything else that might be required with the 1120, right? Non-resident owners also need a 5472 in there, amongst other things. So, uh, but, but the takeaway here is as long as the withholding's done, uh, Sam shouldn't need this 1040NR. So, uh, so that covers everything I want to discuss on this slide and this video. I, I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below or reach out for a consultation. If you have any uh, more in-depth questions, happy to help wherever I can. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you.